So you're like me. You bought a new house. You're all excited. You go check on your new house. The builder shows you around, and they tell you you have this HRV, which is heat recovery unit. Now this thing keeps circulating air, or you can use it to vent air as well, and you know it recovers some heat and helps you to save energy bill. Then you check out your bathroom. You find out something is missing, the exhaust fan. Eventually, you find out because of that you have rusted light fixture nuts and also rusted hinges. And you go to your attic opening and wonder if you can check what's going on up there and see if it's possible to put in bathroom fans. So you go up on your ceiling. You take a look at your attic. You've got blow-on insulation. You've got nowhere to step on. So you know it's pretty much impossible to install a bathroom fan. What are you gonna do? So you come back downstairs. You go ask your wife. Hey, honey, do you think it's possible that you can finish taking shower and hair drying within fifteen minutes? Fuck off. Well, that's a no. So you're screwed. But in reality, are you? So the difficulty for installing bathroom fan first would be, how are you gonna walk on your attic? Now here's the solution. You can see, for each stud, you put on a two by four to support, and on the top, you put on some one inch thick tie so that you could safely walk on there. Now, to install these, you will start with the first one, and then somewhere up here, you would install a temporary two by four so that you can put one feet on here. And the other feet on here. With somewhere to stand on, you can then flush the bottom piece right here, and then put on a temporary piece of two by four so that you can keep working and reach the next one. Keep doing that until eventually you're gonna reach the end of the wall. There you have a little sidewalk on your attic, and also you can have some extra storage room for little boxes. So some people may question, are you fucking with the attic? Well, in reality, you're not fucking with the attic because by doing this, you're adding in extra ties for your roof, which only result a stronger roof. One thing you want to have is some kind of head protection when you walk on here, because as you can see, there is nails and screws and studs on top of the attic where you could accidentally bump your head into and that hurts. So you go to your bathroom, find out where the switch is and which side the switch is attached to the stud. In this case, it's the right side, which I checked. So line up with the left side of the switch, go up, put through a super long drill bit to locate where the hole is going to be, and then you will also want to locate another drill bit somewhere on the ceiling here so that you know that's where your bathroom fan is going to be installed. So I've put in these location drill bits downstairs in the bathroom and you can see these where they are located now. There's one here and there's one there. That tells you that I want to clear off some space between these studs here so that I can walk on there. And this one would be used to run wires to the additional switch. And that one would be used to cut holes and of course, install the bathroom fan. One thing I'd like to mention, as you can see, is I switched from the non-medical mask to KN95 mask for better protection, because this one is it's not because of filtration rate, but because how this goes around your face leaves no gaps that you, which you could accidentally breathe in all this blow-on insulation. And they're basically made of fiberglass, they're really bad for you, even on your skin. Be sure to wear the proper mask because that's how it looks like after sweeping all the blow-on insulation. Um, to cut the hole, first you want to uh, sweep away all the blow-on insulation. Um, you can walk on the studs, that's fine. I normally like to put a little piece of 2x4 in the middle so that uh, I can stand with a better position. 
uh, just in case I fall off the ceiling. Um, so after you sweep that, uh, you obviously want to, um, if the exhaust fan, exhaust fan you bought doesn't have a um, cut template, you want to set your exhaust fan on the drywall and then mark it with a sharpie so that you know how big the hole is going to be. Now there's different types of exhaust fans you can get. Uh, there's one, the one I have, it's got um, two screw holes on each side where you just mount it on the side of the stud. Where the other ones could have a lip on the uh, side where it faces down into a bathroom. And there would be a couple holes on the side, on each side you can screw on. Um, now, I am accessing attic for the electrical wiring anyways, so this is the one I prefer. Now, to mount this one, there's a little trick. Uh, once you set this on the drywall, on top of the drywall, and you haven't cut the hole yet, put down one screw here on the slot, on the bottom, same as here on the bottom, so that... You know, after you cut the hole, you can easily mount it on the screws and then drop it to the top where it's going to have that thickness. So it's going to be into the drywall instead of just sitting on the drywall hole. Um, in that way, also, you don't need someone try to hold it for you in the bathroom because you know that the height from here to here is how much you're gonna have this bathroom fan dropped into the drywall hole, which is perfect. Now, if you don't do that, you cut the hole, and then you try to mount this thing on the stud, uh, you're gonna have some trouble without help. Um, in that way, you it's probably better that you get someone to hold it underneath in the, ba uh, in the bathroom for you. Okay, so that was pretty tricky, but uh, we made it, putting a stud here and then putting one more stud there so you, you got somewhere to step on. And then that space is so tiny, it took me forever to cut the hole and, you know, try to secure the same fan, but uh, eventually, here it is. So the next step is to hook up the hose. So I like to cock the gap before putting on the plastic cover. Um, I will be bringing another extra set of wires so that I could have some lighting in here since I'm drilling the hole and running wires anyways. Um, I taped this one so that I know this will be used for the power to exhaust fan. And then the other wire runs through the hole will be used to put in two extra lighting in the uh, attic. So once you run the wire, you want to uh, secure the wire all the way to the unit on the stud and then you want to put the wires through one of these connectors this metal piece come with the exhaust fan but you have to purchase the um, connector separately um, you know the wiring is pretty simple you have ground you have neutral you have hot just put these all together and then secure this metal plate with screw on the unit tighten this set screw you're all set so take a look at the existing box here. That was the light switch for the bathroom light. Now I've turned it off already, so, but you know, you always want to double check even if after you turn off the breaker, check with the meter, make sure everything is off. Now that was in when I tested, that was out, which goes to the light fixture. And then after it goes through the light fixture, the other side goes into neutral, which is right here. Now there's one extra hole for me, which is good. So what I'm gonna do is, because this is not edible one GAN box, I'm gonna have to remove this entire box and then install a two GAN box. Now, if you have one of these switches where the pushing connector has a slot underneath, you can easily push in a screwdriver flathead and then pull out the wire. If you have one of these ones that I have, well, what you have to do is you're gonna have to wiggle it back and forth until it comes out. 
Most time it does, but sometimes you can see this one broke inside, which is fine because you can still use this for the future use. Now, this thing works as same on the connector here. I've wiggled out the other two neutral wires already, but uh, this one doesn't have any slot you can press. All you do is you wiggle it back and forth and it'll come out. Make sure you stay away from the electrical box because the sharp edge could easily kill you if your hand hit on it. So tape the one and only wire which goes from the switch, out of the switch, to the light fixture. In this case, I don't have a tape with me, I just looped it so that I can tell this is the wire. Anytime I do wiring, I tend to use pigtail method. Now, you wouldn't see that much at home because it's not a must by code. Electricians, of course, want to save time and money You know, when they are uh, wiring up your house. Now, there's so many benefits of using pigtails. One of these is, say you have the light switch. Now, instead of using pigtail, you, I previously had uh, these two hot wires, one here and one here. Now, what if the light switch is gone? What if the light switch is broken? Now, that probably results the other side not working as well. Um, by using this pigtail method, um, it doesn't matter if the light switch works or not. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wire this up. So I am using a motion sensing switch. So we have the hot wire, which is gonna go in to this switch. And then this is out from this wire, goes to the exhaust fan on the top of the ceiling. Now, do purchase these universal wire nuts. Um, if you want to use these quick connectors, that's fine. It's just very hard to remove in the future if you ever have to touch it. But my guess is you're not going to touch it ever. Uh, it is a lot more expensive than universal ones, which saves, you know, it's a lot of effort, but it's totally worth it. I think this is the best one. Take a break, finish your beer. What happens is when you walk in this narrow attic, you get exhausted quickly and you know you don't want to make mistakes. You don't want to fall off the ceiling. So do take frequent breaks. Um, make sure you have energy to handle you know, doing all that tough work and walk on the small attic space. So to talk a little bit about the event hood outside, um, you want to get these with bird guard so that birds don't get in and you also want to have the backflow damper here i know uh, the fan unit would have a backflow damper but this is uh, to prevent anything going into the hose cut two holes with your cup saw or if you don't have cup saw you can use jigsaw secure your ladder with screws if you have nobody to hold it for you okay so that's finished to be honest with you it's fucking scary up there 21 feet extension ladder plus the deck height plus a little 5 feet height yeah it's like 30 feet up there so coming inside we're gonna see all the gap around the duct with the spray foam insulation um, it's weatherproof, leak proof, UV proof uh, the one I get is also white, so if there's any extra leaks on the side, let it be, you know, the color matches with the vent I got. You can see I have one piece of tie here. Um, eventually, once I finish the project, I'll get a couple more ties all the way down to the uh, entrance and also on the other side as well. Now, this is because when you walk on this narrow little sidewalk, it's really easy to fall off to the other side because of these uh, studs here pushing. Um, so if you do fall, these are going to save you from falling over your ceiling and have to repair your ceiling and all that to headaches. So, smart way. So we've applied lots of spray foam as you can see. Um, it's also filling all the gaps outside as well. Um, in this case, I wouldn't have to bring the insulation out because spray foam is one kind of insulation and better, of course. So we're just going to first tuck tape the hose on one of these vents here. And then we'll just do the cheaper way of using a really long zip tie. So there it is, as you can see. 
we have the insulation all the way up to the spray foam because spray foam is just uh, uh, recently applied like 10 minutes ago so it's still sticky it's gonna catch on this fiberglass insulation and keep it in the place now inside you want to bring the plastic hose all the way up to the front and then you want to push it backwards a little bit here so that you can apply a couple rounds of tuck tape and then put a zip tie inside. Now here, I'd like to mention I am using insulated duct, the uh, soft hose, which you don't have to. If you have the patience of burying the entire hose underneath all this blow-on insulation, then you, you can probably save quite a bit of money on the um, cheaper non-insulated hose. Um, in this case, I'm just happy with spending a little bit more money on this because it saves a lot of effort. The uh, soft hose should be secured with steel strap every uh, couple of studs. That's what I did. Um, now, these things are really hard to cut, so don't expect you're going to cut it. You're just going to use a cutter here. You snip this. And then you're going to bend it back and forth to break it. In that way, it's a lot easier. One thing you want to do after you finish is to gently pat down your insulation so that it restores the original density. Because once we touch it and put it back, it's a lot more fluffy than original shape. So you can see the difference here. Here's how it looks like when I just kind of scoop all the insulation back. And here's how it looks like after I pat down these blow-on insulations. So, you know, it's um, totally up to you. I don't think it makes a huge difference really, but uh, it just looks nicer in this way. That's all. That's it. We're all finished. I've got uh, two bathroom exhaust fans installed here. As you can see, the hoses. And then I've also got uh, two um, basement type lights in here as well. Um, obviously, wire is a lot more expensive compared to rope. So I've extended this rope all the way here, as you can see, to the entrance. And I even made a little nut for the pull string, which is made of wire nut, anyways. So, um,. You know, once I got time, I'll finish these railing ties here and also on the other side. And I'll probably put more um, 1x4 ties on that side as well so that I have more storage room for it, for this. Um, you know, this is uh, for sure a big project. Uh, you know, overall, it took me uh, three, four days. Um, the... Um, all these um, little sidewalk took a day. Um, each bathroom fan took a day. Uh, you know, the other one was a little bit easier because it was closer to the middle. Um, but I uh, spent extra time doing the wiring for the basement lights. Uh, the further lights is actually got a receptacle on there as well in case I ever need to plug in something. Uh, this one is just a simple um, bathroom post screen light. Um, you know, you probably noticed too that I'm not using the um, plastic plastic uh, electrical box, but uh, I used metal ones with the uh, vapor barrier on the top. That works too. It's a, it's a cheaper way of doing things. Uh, acts like a lower umbrella to catch any uh, moisture. So, um, you know, if um, this is something you want, go ahead and do it. If you get stuck somewhere, uh, feel free to... Uh, Send me a message. I'll be happy to answer any uh, questions.